Hi guys, it's Pamela with FX Acrylics. I haven't put out a video in a while because I've been, well, there's no excuse, but I've been fighting with this color chart and it's taken me about six hours to make this, no lie, but I'm not going to cry about it. It's done and it's beautiful. Look at it. Now, what I did was I took all of the colors that I plan on using with paint pouring. And you know that I pour, well, if you've seen the, I think, eight videos that I have so far, <laughs> I use Fine Touch Acrylics, and they only make about, let's see, they make one, two, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 colors, I believe. And here's the primaries. Naphthalene carmine, which that's a new word for me, naphthalene. I mean, usually they just name it carmine, but we'll have to research what that means. Primary cyan, primary yellow, and there's a primary orange, and there's a grass green, there's a pink, which I did not buy, and I'll tell you why. There's a viridian green, which is kind of an aqua. There's an ocean blue. There's a cyan. Well, I already said that, primary cyan. There's a phthalo blue and there's a deep violet, there's a burnt umber, yes, it's a dark, dark brown, and black. So, I've added some tones or hues to that. I use another name for color. I did do a little research, believe it or not, and there's a big difference between a warm and a cool color, as you can see here. Here's a lemon yellow, which is cool. Here's a warmer yellow in their primary yellow. So when you mix different colors with these two, you'll get a pretty different outcome. Um, so I went ahead and added a cool yellow to this lineup. I also chose a yellow ochre and a magenta. Now Artist Loft is the brand that I chose to pair with this because they're similar in texture. Uh, these are always uh, accessible to me anyway with Hobby Lobby. They're always on sale. These are always on sale. I think they're 50 off right now. And these are buy two, get one free at Michael's. So it's something that's accessible. I chose to do that rather than order a paint online. Um, when I looked at it ounce for ounce and the cost, Really, this was the best I saw. Now, anything less than that, a tempera paint um, or maybe a kid's paint that's even less money, I didn't want to use that. I wanted to keep a certain soft body texture and that's what these have. So, onto the color chart. I listed all those colors that I just mentioned right here, and I also mentioned, I also listed them <laughs> across the top, and I went from red to pinks to yellows to green, blue, brown, and black, and then I did that on this side in the opposite direction. So I started down here with black, brown, purple, green, yellow, pinks, and red. So the same colors are on this top row and this side row, just in reverse order. And that's so that when I blended them together in all of these squares, I would be able to cross-reference. Now I'm sure you can find other videos on color charts, and I did reference a couple of those, and I'll list them down in the down bar so that you can reference them too. Uh, you can make color charts in any way that you want, but this is how I chose to do it to start off with. And uh, considering the amount of colors that I was dealing with, um, you can also mix your colors with white. You can mix them with 
gray. Um, you can go from one end of the spectrum to the other. It just depends on how large a chart that you want to actually make, but this one is good for me for right now. I also left space over here so that I can add colors in the future if I feel the need, but at this point, I don't know that I really feel the need. And I don't feel the need to make another chart anytime soon either, so. <laughs> With this chart, you can mix two colors together, as I said. Uh, take one from this side and run one from the top. Cross-reference them, for instance, we've got phthalo blue. And we have the lemon yellow. And if I cross-reference those together, we get this green. Now, with the other yellow, the deeper shade of yellow below it, you can cross-reference, cross come right down, come down one more, and see you get a little different shade of green. So, now, when I cross-reference these colors, what I'm doing is I'm adding twice as much of this color and then just maybe a quarter of this color coming from the top. So when you cross-reference over this green, for instance, with the phthalo blue and the lemon yellow, it's going to have more lemon yellow than phthalo blue. It's going to have more than twice the lemon yellow than phthalo blue. And especially with this lemon yellow because it is so transparent. It'll tell you on the bottle with these that, and I'll give you a close-up of this, uh, as you may know, the better paints will tell you if they are opaque or transparent or semi-transparent. And when it says transparent, it's not flying because I had to mix a lot of this just to get, uh, just to get a color. Now I could have mixed it different ways, but this is how I chose to mix it. I think I used very little phthalo blue because the phthalo blue in any line is very, very pigmented. And I don't think it's because it's, well, maybe opaque. Let's see. Let me grab one real quick. It's right here. Yeah, it's transparent. But whatever pigment they use in this, and I haven't researched that yet, that's another video, it's very strong. So I'd use very little lemon yellow with just a little phthalo, but that wasn't the case with all of the mixtures, with maybe the exception of the deep violet, which was also very pigmented like the phthalo, so it took very little of it. I would use three quarters of the main color and then maybe a quarter of the secondary color. Now on the flip side, what's so great about having a chart like this as you can see, your paint's mixed in several different ways. I also added 50% white, as you can see on this line going down in these colors. Half of them are colored in a little bit lighter shade. I'll zoom in on that so that you can see that I added 50% white with each one of these. Along the top here, I just left them as their true color. This one has more of the phthalo than the ocean blue. This one has more of the ocean blue than the phthalo. As you can see, this is a teal, and this is more of a, well, I'd say a more of a primary blue color. <laughs> so, I'm going to go in and I'm going to label these, of course, along the top. I spent so much time with this that I kind of know it by heart. But I can go in and label the colors along the top and along the sides. And again, like I said over here, I can add more as I go. I can even add on to the bottom. I stopped here at the violet because when I started mixing the burnt ember, all the colors were pretty much black. They were all pretty much, now you might look at this one and say, for example, that's um, that's an aubergine. You could say that. <laughs> this is the deep violet mixed with the yellow ochre. 
Um, I mixed it with pink here and just got a little lighter purple, which I was surprised at that. We'll be really surprised at what you might come out with. Now, this chart is really just mixing two colors together in two different ways. I didn't even add white when we're talking about the center here. I only added a 50% white on the outside. Some people take each one of these color mixtures and they add white to it five or six times and that's just too much for me right now. Um, there are colors, of course, that are not on this chart, but this gives me a reference point. Say, for instance, if I wanted to make peach, and this is the whole reason why I did this chart, um, I would just go here and pick out something that's close to peach. For instance, here's a peach. It's, if I come to this side, it's the primary, or I'm sorry, cadmium orange in the fine touch mixed with a yellow ochre in the artist loft came up with this orange here now if i want something a little peachier then i can just add some color to it so i would mix this up and then i don't know maybe go online and add something to it um, it may just be something i can do by sight i went ahead and looked up what goes into peach officially, or at least by somebody online that said it did. And they say that white, red, yellow, and I used the primary yellow in the fine touch, and I used the light magenta in the artist loft. I have a deep magenta also in the artist loft, but it's this one, but I didn't use that. I'm just gonna try to stick with the light. It comes in the larger tube, so that's why I want to try to stick with that. It's more cost effective. Actually, yeah, it's more cost effective because I don't have to go to the store as often to pick it up. So I think they're the same price, sounds for else, though, but you know. Okay, so to make peach, 50% white. Let me this out here. 50% white. hundred percent red a little less white there about 50 percent yellow and about 30 percent pink so let's see what I get I think um, that's a deep peach <laughs> call that a deep peach or you could call it I would call it salmon but it's not this orange here for sure because we added some red to it if I keep adding white though I bet you this is gonna lighten up to a nice peach and this is artist loft white that's the white that I chose to use on this row here where I added 50% white because I want it to be consistent with, with my white because I'm going to be using that quite a bit in the pores. And I'll grab that bottle just so that you can see and I'm sure everyone knows Artist Loft Flow. Um, is that right there? They have a lot of colors, a gold, a silver. Uh, their pink is a really hot pink. I tried mixing it here. It's not pigmented enough, so it may have use or a purpose in a pour, but not, not as far as mixing colors and trying to, to get where I need to get. So I'm just using Artist Loft White, and I get some silver and gold that I may throw in a pour. So that's pretty peachy there. That's pretty peachy. You can call it a salmon, but I think with 
a little more yellow, we've got a peach. And so I'll do this. Write down the ratios. And if I really like the color, I'll keep it in an empty jar for another pour. So that's it, guys. That's how I've decided to deal with the limited color range and this brand, Fine Touch Acrylic from Hobby Lobby. So, hope you enjoyed it. Maybe you learned something when you watch my future videos and something goes wrong. We can blame the color chart. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Hey, it's free. Mm -hmm.